Welcome back to How to Hyperbaric podcast. In this season, I'm discussing different natural therapies that go well together with hyperbaric oxygen therapy. We talked about IV therapy, we talked about PMF, massage, self-care, whatnot. And today is a very interesting topic of conversation. We're going to talk about red light therapy. Everybody's asking about red light therapy, how to combine it with hyperbarics, who can benefit, are there any contraindications? So this is what we're going to cover today. And I have with me Dr. Zait Ratanzi, uh, who is a specialist both in hyperbaric therapy and red light therapy. Dr. Ratanzi have been practicing hyperbaric therapy for 24 years. It's getting close to 25 and many years of specializing in red light therapy. So he would be the person to go to ask all these questions. Uh, welcome to the show, Zay. Really excited to have you with me today. Well, thank you for having me again, Doc. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Yes, it's always a pleasure talking to you. I always learn from you. It's your uh, so many years of experience. Wow. And you've operated the first multi-place hyperbaric chamber in Canada. And when you told me how many hours of hyperbaric treatments, it seemed like an astronomical number, right? It's something in the tens of thousands of... You've done a lot of... Yeah. So... Um, you know, we've been around hyperbaric oxygen for um, that many years. And to be honest, uh, it's only a one or two year different uh, span of time before I started doing light therapy, uh, both red light and near infrared, plus the other wavelengths. And so very similarly, how um, oxygen helps generate cellular energy, so does uh, red light therapy that um, excites cytochrome C oxidase and causes cellular energy. The difference is when we breathe, our heart pumps oxygen or in a chamber throughout the body. With light therapy, uh, we put um, a diode or a pad over an area, let's say the, the elbow, the shoulder, the uh, frontal lobe of the brain, or um, the wrist, that example of the wrist. And it's a very localized effect. OK, so that's um, the similarity that we have um, energy to that area. What I've realized, the human body is the best doctor that we have. If you cut your skin, skin heals, but or any tissue, any organ, organ system. But we are oxygen dependent, energy dependent. And, and so what happens is in a high, hyperbaric chamber, we just generate so much surplus of oxygen energy, the human body says, oh, I got enough energy to um, repair, regenerate, do things, um, expedite uh, processes and natural processes that the human body and the organs and tissues have the ability uh, to. In light therapy, it's the same, but it's a localized effect. It's such a strong localized effect. Now, I use a combination of uh, uh, red in uh, various uh, wavelengths is how we dose it, um, but also near infrared. And near infrared also can have um, the effect on the cytochrome C oxidase. Uh, but what happens with that near infrared, we get a very short term rise in blood flow. There's this quick release of nit nitric oxide. Um, and what's happening is the blood vessels dilate right um and it opens up the blood flow well what do you have in blood nutrients oxygen right so you're dosing so you get a dual effect by that more energy more blood flow blood flow more oxygen more energy so it's even more dose to that there's such a high rise locally that now there's metabolic activity going on in that area and we create these reactive oxygen species just so quickly that the body sees that as this sort of like a spark type um, fire and a very strong anti-inflammatory response is created to that area, an, an anti-inflammatory response. So we get blood flow, 
we get a reduction in inflammation locally, more cellular energy locally, right? And now, if we have inflammation um, and we can target an area with an anti-inflammatory, not medication, but an anti-inflammatory through this mechanism, what happens is a lot of times if there's pain involvement, inflammatory pain, uh, that can be reduced. So some people can use the combination of the red and infrared for pain relief. And so those are probably the three biggest things that we see in uh, the light therapy is this strong circulatory uh, pathway locally. And, and then what happens is something called angiogenesis and the body starts saying, hey, we need to start creating new road. Uh, the, the, um, the blood vessels uh, might need to be um, new circulatory pathways created because there might be um, blood vessel disease or damage to that area. So we start uh, locally creating a long-term response to health and healing in that area. So if anytime someone has an injured area that's very targeted, localized, that's where I'll apply the light therapy. Hyperbaric is something systemically, it takes time. You're building, 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 dosing. And all of a sudden with hyperbaric, you get stem cell mobilization release. The body is in a full body repair regeneration, including the wrist and the brain. But it's when we want to target an area even more so, that's when we'll add the light therapy pad and we'll get the best of both. I see. So let me summarize this. So the okay. three main benefits of the red and near red, right, therapy yeah. or, uh, are decrease in inflammation, increase in blood flow, and increase in energy production. And uh, uh, reduce pain. And reduce uh, pain. Uh, um, so uh, pain, inflammation, and blood flow are, are, are the three three um, and those are the three fda cleared indications uh, that we have here in the us for utilizing them it's it's also as we as as i saw from that earlier 2001 study wound healing lots of work on wound healing but it's not fda cleared for that so uh, you know some doctors might prescribe it off label but basically you're doing you're getting more blood flow, more oxygen, and it's um, the light doesn't heal the wounds. The human body does through that energy potential. Remember that. Uh, yeah, absolutely, because body is the best healer, and it's the only healer. Everything else are the tools that we're using. And then when you combine red light therapy with hyperbaric therapy, they sort of help each other along the way because in a hyperbaric chamber, what happens vessels vasoconstrict they become narrower as a physiological response to increased oxygen right saturation then when you apply the red light it sort of overcomes that mechanism and increases the the blood flow to the particular area that we want to target thus making more oxygen available or sort of uh improving the transport right of oxygen to that particular Wait, area. yeah so here's the thing, in a hyperbaric chamber, um, oxygen, that extra dose of oxygen is in the plasma, right? So if 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 we have uh, more oxygen molecules in the bloodstream going to localized tissue, then I open up the blood flow, uh, the blood vessels, and I create more flow. Uh, it's a dual effect because, so it's like getting a high pressure dosage in a local area when we're doing mild, low pressure hyperbaric. So um, as, as you probably know, I'm a big supporter of both low pressure and higher pressure protocols. And um, uh, when we do low pressure hyperbarics, there's um, the, the dosage is lower. So that's systemically. So let's say I, I wanted for certain conditions a higher localized dosage. Uh, then 
I would stack and combine the two. Otherwise, I would you they could be separate independent uh, utilizations as well. And you could do frequency. Uh, uh, with the light therapy, you can apply it again um, if even every four to six hours. It's such a strong localized effect. You want to leave it, um, apply it, not do anything for at least four hours. So I always say, if you want to repeat it, four to six hours later. But um, light therapy is so strong in just one session. It's quite amazing. You talk to anyone that uh, practices with light therapy. And I, and I think because it's just focused so much in one area. And that's why some people say, oh, I want to light this area, light this area, light this area. Pick one area because that's where you get uh, a really strong uh, physiological uh, response uh, from that application and and you know uh, one study uh, uh, came with light therapy went head to head with celebrex diclofenac your strong non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs for pain and there was no uh, uh, outcome difference that they found but the difference with light therapy is we don't have kidney failure uh, that we know of with light therapy we don't have gi bleeding the side effects of 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 and we're localized. Plus, if you're providing that cellular terrain of, of actually uh, nutrients and circulation, what we're also helping is not just um, reduction in localized anti-inflammatory pain, but um, helping that area in final healing of that as well. So it's a dual effect. Uh, that's why I always like looking at utilizing light therapy. Um, you know, when... Um, pain is probably a big, strong, immediate type response that we'll see. Um, as long as someone's not on a, a COX-2 inhibitor or a medication that might interfere with light therapy, um, because it needs to have that strong pro-inflammatory to create that fire so the body sees an, uh, that it needs to produce an anti-inflammatory to that area, if that makes sense. Oh, I see. We're going to come back to contraindications, especially when it okay. comes to medications. But the question that I really want to ask, uh, it's on my mind. So you said that you can do it every four to six hours, use it on one area, specifically target that area. But when you combine it with hyperbaric therapy, how do you time it? Do you do it before? hyperbarics oh. after or during hyperbarics um it depends you know some of you know uh, some people that are time constricted with acute uh, uh conditions uh will do it inside uh the chamber we might do shorter uh session times uh others uh, i do after um i like when you come out of the chamber your uh, oxygen uh, levels are still high that's when i'll dose uh the light therapy um uh, but you know, you you talked about other um, podcasts that you've done with different uh, different types of modalities, IV therapy and things like that. Even with those, you could put the light and combine uh, those effects. Just think blood flow, circulation, and especially pain inflammation. If you're already sitting there in a chair, uh, uh, you put a pad on and just let the light do its job, a 20 minute session. So it's, the, the therapy is totally uh, integrative with any other natural therapy out there. Yeah. Yeah. What happened is we used to we used to have uh, the, the laser diodes and, and we used to have staff that would push um, and, and move uh, the diode, but it creates a lot of staff time. Um, and all we're trying to do is dose by by having the diode um, uh, push down. Um, and and so. Uh, what we did is we, um, in the light therapy pads that we use, we actually put diodes sticking out in the pads. That way it could be wrapped with Velcro and, and nice and tight over the skin, not over clothing. And now we know we have a correct dosage uh, going there. So we wrap it and turn it on. So it really is an easy self-apply system and it saves a, a lot of time on on the application is very very simple and easy as as you already know 
So you mentioned that if you do it inside the hyperbaric chamber, the sessions are shorter. Uh, what are they typically? Ten minutes then? Or uh, did well, you get it? No, I typically um, uh, will dose typically the hyperbaric shorter, oh, but it mm -hmm. depends, um, um, it really really depends on on what type of pro protocol. If they're doing an injury recovery protocol, then we'll keep the same. Um, uh, uh, the same, you know, time frame of a longer hyperbaric session. If they're looking at more performance type, uh, um, uh, application, then we'll shorten that 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 hyperbaric session. But typically, the light is always 20, uh, 20 minutes. Sometimes we'll do ten. We did develop a light bed as well. That's a full body exposure. Um, and we dose that at 140 milliwatts. Um, uh, but what we're doing with that one is a 10 minute or a 20 minute session. So, um, you know, you can, it, I like 20 minutes, but you know, 10 minutes has been shown to have a pretty strong therapeutic benefit. So some people will just stop it at 10 minutes. And when you say we, you're referring to LS Pro system lights, right? Um, oh, that's the light systems that we use, correct. LS Pro systems. And uh, we have a discount for the pads that could be used inside a hyperbaric chamber because this is the question I get asked all the time. Please recommend a brand that has a red light pads that could be used inside so the two therapies could be combined at the same time. And LS Pro has those pads and with a discount code MASHA20, you're getting 20% off on anything that's on the website. And there are many different uh, red light therapy devices and applications that you can find there. Uh, excellent, so that's, that's great. Uh, I'm really excited about it because I, I have my personal story with red light therapy. I had a long COVID last year, which hit me really bad to the point that unfortunately I couldn't even put two words into a sentence. Um, I was forgetting words. I was forgetting, I speak different languages. I was forgetting those languages. And I was in a lot of pain because it produced a flare in my psoriatic arthritis. And what really helped, of course, I used hyperbarics. I used PMA. I used everything. I threw everything I knew into the fire. But what really helped me with pain and mobility of the joints, which was terrible, terrible, absolutely. And when I would apply the red light, I could move. Like I could move my elbow. It was my larger joints that were affected, but also fingers. And it absolutely, it made such a difference, unbelievable. And I have a dog with an autoimmune disease that the whole world knows about. So when she has a flare, we always put red light therapy on her. She stays 20 minutes and then she's like new the next day. She can walk. It's, it's such a miracle. With animals, they respond much faster than humans because they don't think. We tend to overthink things. I think that's the, the problem. But really, those two examples from my personal story and my patients who are using red light therapy and they see incredible results. Um, I have a big base or population, I don't know how you say it. A lot of patients with autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease means they're in pain. And red light is, is a solution. How can you compare a natural therapy, which is a red light therapy, to a medication that you just said, like kidney failure, all those side effects? Yeah. What about the what about the lighting of their stomach? It's going to be absolutely destroyed in the liver and, and by medication. And you have an alternative. And you it, can use it with hyperbarics. Like I loved, I don't know yeah. what is it, but I love to integrate therapies because all of a well, sudden... It, it, yeah, in 2009, a, a landmark study came out on light therapy, and uh, it was in The Lancet published, and they looked at randomized control trials. I think they took 16 R uh, RCT uh, randomized control trials, and um, they looked at acute 
and chronic neck pain. And light therapy was applied and showed benefit for acute neck pain, which um, we, we had uh, good already uh, data on. But then the interesting thing is the follow-up was 22 weeks after completion of light therapy protocol. Um, 20, that's what, five months later, people with chronic neck pain were still improved. Can you imagine I've had neck pain for 15 years and all of a sudden you do a, a one or two month light therapy protocol and five months later, you're still feeling the benefits of that. And um, it, it's it's one that, again, if there's an area that's localized, that's hurting, that's tight, uh, whether you want muscle relaxation or you want to target an area. Uh, there was a study that came out, um, uh, what do they do, um, tw twice a, for low thyroid. It's contraindicated per se for a high thyroid, we don't know, but for low thyroid, a uh, study came out, the light therapy, just twice a week for five weeks, 10 sessions. And uh, half the patients reduced the or didn't, uh, the levothyroxine. There, there was so much data produced uh, and and it was followed with imaging uh, to show the, the 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 blood flow effects are quite profound uh, when when you put that twenty minute pad over the area, and so what I realized is just like hyperbaric, I'm providing so much um, oxygen in, in in the light therapy nutrients and targeted immune response. Think immune cells are in in the blood. Uh, you know, uh, what's in blood. It's everything that we need. And also, it's not only the blood going in to the uh, tissue, it's the circulation going out, the venous and the lymphatic. And, and so what light therapy is doing is helping the good stuff go in and expediting the bad stuff going out. Uh, we call that the, the detox. The microcirculation, correct. And actually, one thing we never talked about was the conditioning effects. You know, more and more we're uh, learning on light therapy, we can condition tissue and protect them, protect tissue. Uh, you know, if you're at risk, you know, we, we use a lot with the uh, fighters, some of the UFC fighters or, or um, the professional players, if they have a um, um, they're coming back from a shoulder injury or any type of injury that the opposing team sees that a weakness, they're going to target that, right? So those are the areas we precondition before um, the game or the tournament or anything like that. So we can cause more uh, conditioning. Someone who is at risk for concussions, uh, they're in contact sport. So let's say in a football player here in the NFL, their games might be on Sunday we might do conditioning uh, protocol on uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Uh, um, and, and, and so you can actually condition, uh, uh, like for the brain, uh, frontal lobe or a full head cap. But what you're doing is you're conditioning uh, that area. So if there was a damage, an injury, less chance of debility created from that. Um, so these are things that, you know, in the sports and athletic world, uh, we originally, I always use light therapy after training or injuries or whatever, you know, what the study showed, do it before, um, well, prevention is the best cure, but yeah, but not like, only that, why do we, why do we yeah. wait until something happens and then we start treating it? How about we do something to prevent those injuries? And you know what came that to was, mind yeah. right away? What about pre-surgery? Can you do that? Exactly. 100%. So if you know you're having a, a, a surgery on your knee or something, you can precondition just the same way. Uh, they did the studies on neurosurgery, you know, for the brain. Uh, but the one thing I, I forgot to add in when I was talking about with the athletes is the studies were so strong. If I put it over my biceps, um, uh, the light therapy, and then 20 minutes later, I did reps. I would do more reps, less fatigue, quicker recovery. That was for all muscle groups. This went, and so um, uh, the Journal of Athletic Training, in they did uh, randomized controlled trials as well and showed, yes, do light therapy 
before or during training. So now we have light therapy in uh, uh, training centers, you know, so not just for injuries, but for conditioning and getting more reps, quicker recovery. Uh, when uh, athletes have quicker recovery, guess what? They can train again, train again, train again, and, and get those tissue stronger. So if you're trying to rehabilitate an area. Do you know the other thing that was found is the type one to four collagen ratio is more tensile or stronger uh, when we did that. So let's say I turn my ankle, ankle's just not the same. We put the light therapy right over the ankle and we start treating that. So we're now creating that extra cellular energy, collagen tissue. And that's what we're, the, that's the key of that red light infrared combination, um, strong collagen tissue. Um, for repair, but not only repairing, repairing stronger uh, tissue. So really good way to focus your body, uh, focus on supporting your body and different organs and organ systems and using, utilizing the light therapy to be a targeted approach. So I've always called it targeted therapy with lights. Excellent. And I see how it's coming together. Like I understand now why you said that they're so similar with yes. hyperbaric oxygen therapy because um, they sort of target mitochondria, they target circulation, they target inflammation, but then they also work synergistically potentiating one another. So you, it's not like you do red light or hyperbaric therapy. It's not either or, it's and. Hyperbaric with red light therapy, that what's going to give you, I think, the most um, effect or maybe faster. Maybe you'll get the results faster. Yeah. And you, and some people will do cognitive exercises. Like I said, we have a frontal lobe, uh, put the light therapy over the brain. Um, you can do nutritional therapy before that, uh, 45 minutes before take some brain supplements, or, um, if you're doing IV therapy and then, um, while the pad is there, then you could do cognitive exercises, memory exercises, things like that. So you're actually, um, you're actually promoting function with uh, a blood flow, energy, metabolic activity, and nutrients. Um, but really utilizing the light therapy as, as um, you know, the, the similarity, we, you, you just restated that, but the difference is I can target um, uh, whereas hyperbaric is the whole body and we just keep doing frequency, 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 it takes time and all organs, organ systems start, uh, uh developing, uh, from that. If we just want to focus on one area to start off with, or even during a long series of hyperbaric, that's where we can take advantage of the light therapy. And, uh, since I have you with me and I'm going to take advantage of it, and I'm going to ask you, you mentioned that preconditioning protocol for somebody who's going to, um, in the UFC, they're going to do a fight is they're going to do three days before. Uh... Oh, yeah, actually with, with, with that, you know, we can even do it before, um, even, um, uh, uh, uh three, five hours before, uh, the uh, fight or something, because, we're not causing vasoconstriction, as you said. With hyperbaric, we're very careful not to do before um, uh, any type of uh, uh, fight or uh, performance. Game or competition. Yeah, yeah. Anytime we're we're trying to do it, um, we'll do it after or precondition the day before. Uh, light therapy is a little bit different. We can do it um, even just before. And what about pre-surgery protocol? When when do you when do you suggest that you, your patients start? Um, uh, uh, I I would say um, uh, daily, three to five days before, mm -hmm. and up until the time of the surgery. That would be a good protocol. Excellent. Uh, Zay, I have a question. How do you? Okay, there's so many red lights out there. Really, uh, how do you choose um, the red light? Well, that is right for you. What should you be it, looking at? It, it, it's a good. It's a good question. Um, I don't. Uh, they're all. Um, to me, light therapy is light therapy. It's um, uh, you know you dose it. Um, I'm very specific on uh, uh, dosaging. That's why I like the um, um, the LS Pro where the uh, diodes come out and we can actually target and push that skin down. 
and and really get a good local dose uh, to that area. Um, but he, you know, getting someone to experience light therapy, it's um, I I can't say enough of what I've seen, just like with hyperbaric, on how the response rates that we get of people saying, why did I do one session? And it, it's two weeks later. And and you talk to, when you start seeing that multiple times, you know there's something different between that. I don't get that from people that do one hyperbaric session. Yeah, I, one hyperbaric session doesn't work really. You will notice the effects, but to get um, the benefit, you need to yeah. do a series of treatments. We know that they have cumulative effect. Really, yeah. I don't want to go into it because it's a, a this episode is about red light therapy. What about red light beds? How are they different? Like, why would somebody do a full treatment on a red light bed or do a localized light beds? Um, yeah, I, I I like the pads because I could really dose well uh, with that. Um, the bed is convenient, easy. A lot of clinics like them because they they um, they're easy to run. You just press the button and that's it. You go in, and the um, you're just engrossed in that light therapy, and there's nothing else. Um, um, why would someone choose the bed? Maybe more convenience the whole body. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, let, let's say if I'm an athlete and I want to precondition my body, I'm going to do a really vigorous workout. I could see that, like you said, pre surgery, uh, post recovery. Um, on the light bed, there's one setting I really like. Um, there's eight different modes. Uh, mode one is pain, two is recovery. Um, there's one called power healing. And it's got uh, some of the best wavelengths of what the um, energy of the sun gives us for healing. And that's a really, really nice one. So I see the benefits in the beds, but the beds, you know, they cost more. Um, and and so on a budget type thing, the pads are, are just a really nice thing to have uh, at home. And what about the red light face masks? They're more for um, aesthetics purposes, or they help with migraine. And um, um, we, it's a, it's an iPad face pad. Um, uh, you know, it, uh, you know, you can help some around the eyes and stuff. But I traditionally use that for that um, circadian ru- uh, 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 rhythm, mood, just. Uh, it, it's it's an amazing experience when you put the light over, you close your eyes, and you're feeling that healing of that uh, of sunlight. Mm-hmm. And you know when you put your body into parasympathetic activity, which is the body's natural state to repair and regenerate, and you put your body in that sleep rest like mode, what's the body going to do? You're in the lowest metabolic resting state and you're in your highest energy potential that net delta of and you're focused in one area it's almost a natural that that's where your 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 body's going to be pushed to be um uh, uh working on right that's you're not doing feeling anything now. else you're not in sympathetic mode you're not walking around you're not you are your body when you are sleeping that's when you regenerate uh when you're in your lowest metabolic state your resting metabolic uh state that's when you are in your healing uh um mode yeah absolutely that's what we want to achieve with every therapy that we we do we want to put body into parasympathetic mode right so the body can start healing itself you mentioned yeah. contraindications. Yeah, you have mentioned COX-2 inhibitors. Are there any other uh, contraindications to red light therapy um, that we know of? Yeah, there's, you know, if, if, if people are light sensitive, you want to be careful, especially if, if it's flashing or your eyes, seizures. Um, so we're 
careful about anyone that is sensitive to to light that way. Uh, most people are fine. A pregnancy over the cervix, you know, just normal stuff. Like if a pregnant woman has a, a, a neck pain or whatever, we don't have a problem with that, you know. So um, over a, an overactive thyroid, we don't have data on cancer. So we say because we don't, don't do it over a known cancer. At the same time, that was what I said 20 odd years ago with hyperbaric. And then it showed actually hyperbaric um, reduced tumor hypoxia, which caused more sensitization when there was benefit of doing that. So I could see light therapy catching up to that. But at this point, I can't say that. So I let uh, patients use their own um, you educate with them and then they can make their own educated decisions. You know, sometimes if we're targeting, like let's say we're doing an IV therapy, um, high dose vitamin C, some uh, practitioners do that. And we're doing a, um, a solid tumor like breast, whatever we could put the light over that. So we're dosing blood flow IV to that area. So if we're trying to target an IV to an area, we can, we can add a light pad at that time. Oh boy. Um, but, but again, that would be, have to be a medical supervision on that because we don't have enough data to say, Hey, just do it over a known cancer. Um, those are, I'm trying to think, um, yeah, it's, it's actually light therapy. We're getting a lot of benefits for, um, uh, post-cancer treatments uh, from radiation and from chemo. Uh, neuropathy is a big one that uh, we even, uh, with LS Pro, uh, has neuropathy boots for because uh, so many people are being diagnosed with neuropathy. So that's um, contraindications, relatively safe procedure. Very safe, very safe, non-invasive. Um... And uh, I mean, I think it's, as I said, it's the easiest combination I yeah. find um, between hyperbarics and red light therapy. Yes, you can combine it with other therapies. Don't get me wrong. And we see amazing results with IV and hyperbarics, PMF and hyperbarics, um, stem cell therapy and hyperbarics, right? We use that to Absolutely. help with stem cell harvesting, mobilization, and, and things like that. But red light is something that you can do at home. Yeah. You don't have to go to the clinic. Yes, you can go to the clinic to get it there, but at the same, you can also get it at home. It makes it a lot easier, and I think it's it's affordable. It's just great, and we're learning more and more about it. And then if we think about the naturopathic medicine, where, where it came from, it's healing with water, air, light, things like that. So we're really within that naturopathic umbrella, which has been proven by thousands of years that it works and it produces healing. We, we are light dependent, oxygen dependent, you know, and and of course, the body needs water, the body needs heat. Uh, we, we, we are nature's. Uh, creation but but what we're doing is we're advancing technology to uh, um, get the best out of nature into our body and uh before i let you go uh i wanted to end it here but that, one last question mental yes. health anxiety depression because you've mentioned light and we know that light therapy helps with depression um what do you what do you find with red light therapy well, um, I, I like that eye mask that we talked about. The eye mask, that's a really, really good one. Just mood. Um, uh, wow. Um, for any type of cognitive, um, you can do uh, the head cap and the frontal lobe pad, um, uh, the deep light uh, pad for uh, more neuronal activity but for me i'm a big person on nutrition anti-inflammatory diet and uh, and and utilizing not only the effects of um of, of blood flow to the brain like when we uh look at light therapy um over the skull like putting it um, um on 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 your head 
um, maybe 30% more blood flow uh, to the brain. Well, that's great. But what if we combine that uh, with various specialties in uh, practitioners in the area that might be doing uh, counseling or other, uh, you know, just reducing stress on the body and the brain. And a lot of times those are nutritional uh, based. Um, some people don't respond well to wheat or other um, uh, types of foods, um, or there might be environmental toxicities uh, that we find that are challenging uh, for um, for the brain. And so what we want to do is do everything all together. You know, we do a lot of visualization as well uh, when someone is doing the light therapy and visualizing happiness and the next steps in their lives that are like, you know, for when we do light therapy and we put that eye mask over, you're 20 minutes at that time you can do so much. It's like a little siesta, but you can actually make that into a goal setting time. It's your time by yourself. And a lot of times we don't give patients time by themselves. And, and what I found is when I put the eye mask on, they can't talk to you. They try. And then they realize, oh, finally we get people to just focus on themselves. And you learn a lot. Um, when you have time to yourself that you can't do anything. Um, if you have that eye mask on, you can't read, right? You can't watch a movie. You, you finally get focused on yourself. So there's, you know, there's so many things that could be done um, if you spend time for yourself and give yourself that time for healing. I want to emphasize the importance of spending time for yourself inside a hyperbaric chamber. That's where putting that mask comes really handy. Oh, Just yeah. Being there, being in the moment when you're healing, observing that healing, you're going to learn, as you said, you're so right. You're going to learn so much about yourself. Like, why are the symptoms even there? Like, what is your body trying to tell you? Um, so amazing to watch um, somebody go through that healing transformation. I, I love that. That's that's why I'm in this profession. And some some people, they inside the chamber, they only take one pad, just that uh, just that face mask. And that's it. Yeah. Uh, some people call it um, face pad. I, I don't know, but it's the face one. And it's got a combination of blue and red, but the blue is 45 nanometers, which is uh, just the perfect sunlight type experience, you know? And right now you can get a 20% off at uh, LS yes. Pro Systems, which is for the month of November and December. So I would really take advantage of it and, you know, create that healing environment, whether it's inside a hyperbaric chamber or just on a bed or whatever you please to, to create that healing space. Dr. Ratanzi, thank you so much again, for you've been on this podcast before. We talked about immune system, many other things, hyperbarics, and now you just, you know, open the whole new world of red light therapy because you've explained things. I think when you understand, when somebody understands the therapy, they're a lot more likely to use it because people are not afraid, something very safe, um, no side effects, very few contraindications really that make sense. And um, right there, another healing tool. So thank you. Well, thank you for having me again. And it's always a pleasure. And your passion for health just keeps growing. I keep seeing it every time we talk. And you're always looking good. So thank you. Thank you, Zeke.